All right, let's get right into it. There is a huge shakeup happening in the virtualization space, and if you're running a small or mid-sized business, you are smack dab in the middle of it. Today, we're going to break down exactly what's going on with VMware after the Broadcom acquisition, and more importantly, what your peers are doing to get out of the mess. Yeah, if you're running a VMware shop, you know exactly what this feels like, right? It probably feels like the walls are closing in when it comes to licensing, and you're being pushed to make some really tough decisions really fast. And look, you are definitely not alone. This is the heart of the problem. Broadcom pulled the plug on vSphere Standard, a product that tons of smaller companies rely on. This isn't just some small change. It's forcing a massive part of their customer base to a breaking point. So let's start with this shakeup. For a lot of folks who've been using VMware for years, this whole thing feels, well, less like a shock and more like a gut punch they knew was coming. And what's really wild is just how fast this all happened. Look at the timeline. It kicks off with the acquisition in 2023. Then, boom, early 2024, vSphere Essentials is gone. That forced a ton of people up to standard. And right after they get used to that, boom, standard is gone too. It's a classic one-two punch. And this number right here, this tells the whole story. When people were forced from essentials to standard, some saw their costs shoot up by 2.8 times. It's a huge red flag that the next forced upgrade is going to be even worse, and for most SNBs, that's just not gonna fly. So you can probably guess how the IT community is reacting to all this. The feeling across the board is pretty clear. Okay, that's it, enough is enough. And that's really kicked off this massive conversation about a mass migration away from VMware. I mean, this quote from an IT pro just absolutely nails the mood right now. There's this very strong sense that Broadcom is doing this on purpose, that they want to get rid of their smaller customers so they can focus on the giant enterprise accounts, and they're going to squeeze every penny they can on the way out. So let me be clear. This isn't just a bunch of angry people posting on forums. People are making real plans and drawing up exit strategies. And as they do, two names just keep bubbling to the top of every single conversation. All right, so first up is the one that's really emerged as the crowd favorite, Proxmox. It's become the clear front runner for a lot of tech-savvy folks. For them, it's not just a technical choice. It's a move toward the freedom of the open source world. Now, for anyone who's not familiar, what is Proxmox? Well, think of it as a complete all-in-one server management platform. It's open source and it bundles everything you need, virtualization, containers, storage, networking, all into one easy to use package. And you're seeing stories like this everywhere now. People who've already taken the plunge are reporting back that it was a smooth move and that the platform is just rock solid. And honestly, that's the kind of confidence boost you need to hear when you're considering a change this big. This chart kind of breaks it all down. The pros are huge, right? It's free to use, and the management tools are baked right in, so no more license hunting. But the cons are real, too. Paid support isn't 24-7, which could be a deal breaker, and you really have to be comfortable in a Linux environment to make it sing. But what if your company isn't a Linux shop? What if your entire world revolves around Windows? Well, that brings us to the second big alternative, Hyper-V. We're calling this one the practical choice because it's all about deep integration within an ecosystem you already know. So here's the best part about Hyper-V. If you're already paying for Windows Server Data Center licenses, you already own it. It's built right in. For any IT department that's heavily invested in Microsoft, it's just a logical, super cost-effective option. And don't think for a second that it's a slouch on performance. This user actually found that they could cram more virtual machines onto their existing hardware and got better CPU performance after they switched. For a small business where every dollar you spend on hardware counts, that is a massive win. So when you look at the breakdown, the pros are super clear. Cost and integration. The downside, the free standalone version is a thing of the past, so you are tying your wagon to the Windows Server stack. It locks you in, sure, but for a lot of businesses, that's an ecosystem they're already happy to be in. Okay, so we've got the crowd favorite and the practical choice. But in all these online discussions, another name does come up, one that promises all the fancy enterprise features. So is there a third way? And that third name is Nutanix. It looks really tempting on the surface because it's this simple, all-in-one solution with amazing top-tier support. But, and trust me, this is a very big but, it comes with a major catch. And this slide just lays it out so perfectly. The whole reason you're trying to get away from Broadcom is to escape vendor lock-in, right? 
Well, the big fear with Nutanix is that you might be jumping out of the frying pan and right into another one that looks almost identical. And if the vendor lock-in doesn't scare you off, maybe this number will. Multiple users have reported that after they go through the whole process of getting a quote from Nutanix, the price comes in at 90 to 95% of what Broadcom is now charging. So you're not really saving money and you're still locked in. So with all the options on the table, the conversation is shifting. It's no longer about if you should migrate, it's about how. We're in the migration reality now, and the most valuable resource you have is time. This admin's mindset right here captures the absolute smartest strategy we're seeing. The goal isn't to panic. It's to try and lock in one last renewal on your current plan if you can, just to buy yourself enough time for a calm, well-thought-out migration. And that brings us to the playbook. Step one, secure your time. Give yourself breathing room. Step two, build your new Proxmox or Hyper-V environment in parallel. Don't tear down the old house while you're still living in it. Step three, test everything. And I mean everything, your apps, your backups, your disaster recovery. This is the dress rehearsal. And only then, once you're absolutely sure, do you go to step four, flip the switch. You know, ultimately, you can look at this whole thing differently. Broadcom has made it crystal clear that they are chasing bigger fish, the massive enterprise giants. So this isn't just a forced migration. It's an opportunity. It's your chance to proactively choose a new technology partner whose goals and costs actually make sense for your business for the long run. The only question is, who's it going to be?